welcome. We're glad you're here. And how many of you, this is your first time to one of the New Begins Home Team events? Wow, a lot of you. That's awesome. We're so glad you are here. It's been um, a while since we've done a lot of in-person events. I think this is our third in-person event this year. Um, we did one in the summertime, and now we are doing this one. We, we never stopped. We did virtual events all last um, winter, and we've archived all of those on our YouTube channel, so you'll be able to go back. In fact, um, if you have the flyer for tonight's event, down at the very bottom of that is all of our contact information, and you can find our YouTube channel there. We actually, back in, I think it was January did a t and February, did a two-part series on immune health, um, where we covered the eight doctors of immune health, and we then did a cooking class on immune-boosting foods to help boost your immune system. So those are really great compliments to the presentation tonight. So if you uh, missed those, you can find those on our YouTube channel. Just look for our New Beginnings Health Team and you'll find our channel. My name is Stacy, and um, my husband is right here. Steve is the pastor here at our church. And I have a great team I'm working with. We've got uh, Kim and Mary Lou. Kim's here, Mary Lou's right here. Marilyn was at the registration table. Um, one of our other members isn't here tonight, but um, these ladies help us put on these events. So I'm very grateful for a great team. And the whole purpose for our classes is to really focus on holistic health, which I believe is mind, body, spirit. So physical, mental, spiritual. We're focusing a lot on the mental, uh, physical tonight, but at times we cover other topics like mental health and we do um, cooking classes as well. We are very uh, into plant-based eating. Some people would call that vegetarian or vegan, um, but we do cooking classes regularly. In fact, that is our next event. So you guys saw your full flyer when you came in in your packet. Yes, in December we are doing a Christmas holiday themed favorites cooking class. So if that is something that you might be interested in, just uh, let us know if you want to come and please RSVP so we know how much food to make because it is a dinner in connection with a demonstration. So that helps us out. Um, I want to begin before we go any further with just praying for our class tonight and for everyone who will be participating. Dear God, I want to thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to share some of the great health principles you have given us. And I pray this would be a blessing for each person here and the families that they represent, that this information could help them to stay healthy, get healthy, um, and potentially save a life. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless this time we spend together. Amen. So I mentioned our YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page, New Beginnings Health Team. Like our page. We post events and different health resources on there. And then we also have a meetup page. And some of you, I know I talked to one person tonight who came from meetup. Anybody else come from meetup tonight? Okay. So that's another way that uh, people hear about us. <coughs> And we had um, a registration card you filled out today, if we did already have your information. And if we have that, we can send you, um, I can email you all these handouts that you have tonight. These are great resources, and you may want to share them with others. So we're happy to send you electronic copies of that and um, pass it on. So we're gonna tonight do um, two parts of this presentation. The first part is gonna be a PowerPoint presentation that's just more of an introduction to hydrotherapy. And then the second part is gonna be a demonstration we're gonna do here of an actual treatment. So how many of you, just so I kind of have an awareness, um, came tonight because you're curious what hydrotherapy is, but you really have like no clue what it is. <laughs> Anybody like that? Okay, that's all right. Um, it's not a term that is used a whole lot today, 
more in the physical therapy kind of area, but as you're going to find out, hydrant therapy has a huge history and I believe it's having a big comeback now, especially in light of COVID and some of the things that people have been facing this past uh, year and a half. So let's begin by talking about hydrotherapy or the use of water to promote healing. <coughs> now, as a Christian health ministry, um, when I'm thinking about health, I believe that the source of healing comes from God and from the scriptures and the word of God. So as I was opening up my Bible and I was looking at and saying, what does the Bible say about healing and water? And is there a connection between those? I found some fascinating things. I came across this scripture in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 8 and 9. It says, then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region. It goes down into the valley. It enters into the sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. <clears throat> How would you like to see a river like that? Isn't that amazing? Now, interestingly, in the context of this chapter, this river is flowing out of the temple of God. So that would explain why it brings healing and life wherever it goes. And then I thought of some of these stories in the Bible that talk about healing and water. In the Old Testament, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, we have the story of Naaman. He's a leper. He comes to the prophet Elijah, and he thinks he's just going to get some miraculously words put over him, and he's going to be healed. And Elijah instead says, go to the Jordan River and dip seven times, and you will be healed. And he's very offended because the Jordan River is not a clean river compared to the rivers back in Syria where he came from. And he was almost about ready to pack up his bags and just go home all mad when one of his servants says, what do you have to lose? Just go dip in the river. And so he did seven times and the leprosy was gone. A simple remedy but it required some faith on his part. And I think that there's a connection between simple remedies and faith in God that really brings the healing. And that's illustrated in the story of the blind man in John chapter nine. He came to Jesus blind and Jesus sometimes would heal people by just speaking a word. But in this case, Jesus spat on the ground, made a poultice of clay and spit put that on his eyes and said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And when he did, his eyesight was restored. And I think that story illustrates again, using simple remedies that God has given to bring healing. You might be familiar with this story in scripture about living healing water. And this was Jesus speaking to a woman at a well who was a Samaritan. And Jesus said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him will never thirst. But the water that I give him becomes in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. God wants to offer each of you living water. In fact, you have a little track you got as you came in that was, says living water on it, doesn't it? And that talks about this living water that brings healing, not just physical healing, but many times our wounds are deeper than physical. They're emotional, they're mental, they're just, we're just stressed and we need healing in a lot of other areas, relationships and all sorts of things. So that's what God wants to provide. And the last form of healing in water I thought of in scripture is the cleansing water of baptism. And this Jesus said in John chapter three, is needed for us not just to experience um, life here on earth, but life everlasting. And this water that fully immerses us cleanses from spiritual maladies. And we're gonna be talking about physical maladies and disease tonight, but I think we all, the Bible says, have a spiritual malady that needs healing and cleansing. So what is hydrotherapy? What is this word? So the word hydrotherapy is just the therapeutic use of water to aid in the health and healing of the body. Hydrotherapy uses water in all forms, steam, ice, 
hot and cold. And examples of this would include things like a fever bath, a hot foot bath, hot and cold packs, steam inhalation, a sitz bath, alternate hot and cold showers, a sauna, and fomentations to the chest followed by cold friction room, which is the treatment you'll actually see this evening. And there are other forms besides this, but these are just some of the most common ones. So what's the history of hydrotherapy? Well, the ancient Greeks were the first to use hydrotherapy. This is largely influenced by Hippocrates, who asserted that diseases are caused by environmental factors, not a form of punishment inflicted by the gods, which was what was popularly believed at the time. So he used hydrotherapy extensively and recorded one of the earliest works on the therapeutic uses <coughs> of thermal water. Now, ancient hydrotherapy varied from bathing in water treated with essential oils to things like this, public baths. And you think maybe of the Romans when you think of this. They had these, and some I think was for therapeutic reasons, and then they became social places as well. Um, but pools and such like that. And sometimes um, hydrotherapy was referred to as water cure, and early medical practitioners used it to treat a variety of maladies. Now, the founder of modern hydrotherapy is Vincent Prietz, and uh, reading a little bit about him, he sprained his wrist when he was young, like about 13, then a few years later broke some ribs, and he found that by just using cold, wet bandages over the area, helped it to heal faster. He thought, hmm, wonder what else water can accomplish. So he started experimenting, trying different things, and to treat many diseases, he came up with using a wrap, a wet sheet, or bandages, and then layering lots of blankets on top to cause heavy perspiration as the body warms up those cold bandages. The body would heat up, and after several hours, the patient would then be bathed in cold water. And this rapid change in temperature, he believed, allowed the pores of the skin to open and detox. And he also emphasized things like vegetarian food and fresh air and rest and drinking plenty of water, which are all very important as well. Uh, another individual who was part of the original uh, founders of hydrotherapy is Sebastian Kenneth. I think, I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyways, he lived in Germany and he wanted to become a priest. He was doing some of his studies and came down with tuberculosis. And if you know anything about the 1800s and tuberculosis, this was considered to be a fatal disease. Uh, but he came across a book about hydrotherapy that had been written in 1734, and it was about cold water curing. So he's like, hey, I got this cold Danube River right here. It's winter time. I will just plunge in this. And he did that, and through these treatments in cold water, he cured his tuberculosis and then dedicated his life to teaching others about water and its uses, and he had some of these bathhouses and such, and then he did treatments, and he also emphasized a lot about herbs. Now, coming to the United States of America, you may have heard the stories of Thomas Jefferson and the Louisiana Purchase, right? We all learned about that in grade school, and Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, who went as explorers all the way across the United States. Well, in the journals of Meriwether Lewis are some fascinating stories about hydrotherapy. The expedition party was returning home, they were in Idaho, when William Branton was experiencing such intense pelvic pain, he couldn't go any further. Now, Captain Clark was a physician, but none of his medicine was helping. On March 21st, Lewis wrote, Branton is now so much reduced, I am somewhat uneasy with respect to his recovery. The pain of which he complains most seems to be seated in the small of his back and it remains obstinate. I believe that it is rheumatism, okay? Two months later, he was still very unwell, but his cure came suddenly, even dramatically. In Lewis's words, Private John Shields observed that he had seen men in a similar situation restored by violent sweats. Branton requested that he might be sweated in the manner proposed by Shields, to which he, we consented. Shields sunk a circular hole, three feet diameter, four feet deep in the earth, kindled a large fire in the hole, and heated it well, after which the fire was taken out 
and a seat placed in the center of the hole for the patient with a board at the bottom for his feet to rest on. Some hoops of willow poles were then bent in an arch crossing each other over the hole and several blankets were thrown forming a secure and thick awning of about three feet high and the patient being stripped naked was seated under this awning in the hole and by that means created as much steam or vapor as he could possibly bear. So they poured water in this hole. In this situation, he was kept about 20 minutes. So we have like a, a sauna we're creating here, right? After which he was taken out and suddenly plunged in cold water twice and was then immediately returned to the sweat hole where he was continued three quarters of an hour longer then taken out, covered up in some blankets and suffered to cool gradually. During the time of his being in the sweat hole, he drank copious draughts of a strong tea of horse mint. So this treatment of hot and cold was very effective. And the very next day, Branton was walking almost entirely free of pain. And within two weeks, he had, Lewis wrote, so far recovered, we cannot well consider him an invalid any longer. Isn't that awesome? Now, because of this, and I think I, uh, deleted a slide by mistake, which is terrible. So um, there was another story just similar to this where a chief of the Nez Pierce tribe where that was there um, had not walked in three years and couldn't use his limbs. And they thought, hey, we've got this hole, let's try it on him. <laughs> so they put him in the same sauna sweat hole, did the same hot and cold treatments and after three treatments, he was able to start moving his limbs and was able to start to walk again. Amazing. Now, many of you may know about this place because you all live here in Michigan, Battle Creek Sanitarium, which was um, in Battle Creek, of course, Michigan, and Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, from which we know Kellogg's Corn Flakes today. So the Battle Creek Sanitarium was a Seventh-day Adventist world-renowned <laughs> health resort. And it started in 1866. It was based on biblical health principles that were taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it was managed by Dr. Kellogg from 1876 to 1943. It was such a premier wellness place that these are some of the guests that came. J.C. Penney, <coughs> the Penney Department Store, Thomas Edison, Amelia Earhart, <coughs> President William Waring Harding, Mary Todd Lincoln, Sojourner Truth, and many, many others. So they had thousands of patients that came to this treatment place. And here, one of the main things they used was hydrotherapy and a variation of treatments. And this is actually a photo um, showing some of the different treatments that were used. And one of these treatments we are going to be demonstrating tonight. Hot and cold applications of water were used to produce reflex effects, including vasodilation and then vasoconstriction, which promotes healing. Patients were also fed a vegetarian diet that emphasized whole grains, fiber-rich foods, and nuts, and got daily fresh air and exercise, which we today, we think those things are very important, but you have to remember 100 years ago, when a person got sick, you kept them in a closed room, you closed the shades, you let no fresh air in, no sunshine, and that's how you were supposed to get better. And people don't get better in those conditions. So our institutions um, around the world trained health professionals in hydrotherapy. This was like standard training everyone received. Um, this is a picture of Battle Creek College where many nurses were trained in hydrotherapy. Now this became very important just a few years later in 1918, 1919. You've probably heard about this more in the news of late about the Spanish flu. Um, this influenza was a huge pandemic worldwide. In fact, a third of the world's population was affected and over they estimate about 50 million people died. Many hospitals were set up to try to treat the sick and people were dying by the thousands. And there's some interesting history about hydrotherapy in connection with the Spanish flu. So I'm going to share a couple of those briefly with you. So in Minnesota, there was a Adventist seminary where students were tr um, training. 120 people on campus and were exposed to the flu. 90 of them got symptoms. They were given no drugs, only bed rest and 
even after they start to recover, they still were kept um, resting for a few days so they didn't have a relapse. Um, a regulated diet and were given fomentation treatments, as you'll see tonight, with hot and cold to the chest, the throat, and the abdomen. Not a single person developed pneumonia or died, which was remarkable compared to the national and worldwide statistics, which I'll show you in a moment. Another place, South Lancaster Academy in Massachusetts. Um, here, they record actually what took place at this school. While the majority of the cases were of a mild type, some were very serious and would undoubtedly have resulted in fatalities. But hydrotherapy treatments applied by students' hands under the direction of one of our own physicians brought marvels in the speedy recovery of our most difficult cases. Doctors who had patients dying day by day marveled at the fact that in our large and crowded dormitories, does that sound like much social distancing happening there? Not much, right? With practically no professional nurses in attendance, we had no fatalities. For ourselves, we attribute it under God to the fact that we put in operation the methods of treating the sick, which for years have been part of our denominational beliefs. Not only are we grateful for the recovery of our sick, but we believe the experience we have passed through as a school has deepened our faith in these God-given principles. Now, not only did this bless them, but once they were experiencing this, they were like, we need to help others. So when the outbreak was at its worst, and it was next to impossible to get proper medical and nursing help, our girls, protected with masks and taking other measures to escape infection, entered homes where the disease was present in virulent form, and did splendid service in behalf of the sick and dying. Their labors of love were rewarded with the warm appreciation of the leading people of the community. The health officers thanked them publicly for their assistance and said it was largely owing to the efforts of our students that the disease was stayed as quickly as it was. Isn't that beautiful? Taking health principles and going out and doing ministry to help save lives. And what a blessing that was. One last um, point about the Spanish flu pandemic. Um, in the journal Life and Health, published in May 1919, there's a whole, this whole issue is actually dealing with how sanitariums, which were like health facilities, health hospitals, but doing natural remedies in the 1800s, um, 10 of our Adventist sanitariums in different parts of the United States were using hydrotherapy. This was of St. Helena Sanitarium in California, and it says this is the hydrotherapy building on the right. So they had a whole building dedicated to hydrotherapy. And in their research, they found that of the 1,100 patients that they treated, only 1.3% of the inpatients died and 3.8% of the outpatients. By comparison, death rates in the general public treated in hospitals range from 13 to 40 percent, and the death rate of soldiers at the U.S. Army hospitals, which were our most advanced treatment centers at the time, was 6.7, almost twice as many as those that were being treated in sanitariums that were using hydrotherapy. Do you think hydrotherapy may have been making a difference? I think it's very possible, and from what you'll see about how hydrotherapy works. So let's just look at the physiological effects of hydrotherapy. Why could it have made a difference in the Spanish flu of 1918? How could it be making a difference today when people get them down with respiratory illnesses? Well, scripture says that there is life in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And it's the blood that brings healing to your body. It does that by bringing in oxygenated blood and vital nutrients, and then carries away waste products, okay? So hydrotherapy actually improves the circulation in your body, thus quickly moving in that nourishing blood and quickly taking out the diseased blood, okay? And this helps to bring healing to those diseased, inflamed areas. So for example, if a person has a respiratory infection, they have some congestion in their chest, they have some mucus building up, they may be even having some difficulty breathing, as in the case with COVID, by using hot compresses to the chest, with alternating cold mitten friction, blood flow is now being increased in this area, breaking up that congestion, bringing in that much needed oxygen, and now the lungs are able to heal and we're not developing pneumonia, okay? We're not getting so sick, we're going and getting hospitalized and getting put on a ventilator. So in hydrotherapy, you have this mixture of hot and cold, okay? So let's use the example of a hot compress. 
So with a hot compress, you have a short, hot application, somewhere between 98 and 104 degrees, for about five minutes or less. This is stimulating circulation. It's causing blood vessels to dilate because of that heat. Now, if we kept the heat on longer, it actually starts to more depress the circulation um, and because the body's now protecting from all that heat. So the blood vessels start to kind of close up. Now, after that hot, sh short, hot application, we're gonna put on a short, cold application, 51 to 65 degrees, and just less than a minute. Um, an art illustration, and I think it'll be 20 to 30 seconds. This is stimulating circulation because the blood vessels are now immediately constricting and in response to those cold temperatures, and then they dilate again. So it's kind of like a pumping action. It opens, it closes, it opens, it closes, and that's making blood flow pushing to that area, okay? So that's kind of what's happening physiologically. Now another benefit of that is this increased circulation is bringing more white blood cells to that infected area or wherever that virus is to fight the illness. So hydrotherapy is therefore in boosting the immune system. Now there are two parts to your immune system, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system is what you're born with. Children have a very strong high innate immune system, which is why they easily get a fever because their body is immediately going into fight mode for that virus. As you get older, your innate immune system becomes less strong. Your adaptive immune system um, has to be formed over time, okay? It's the one that responds to things like, uh, it, it remembers things and um, responds to vaccines. Now, your innate immune system is your body's first line of defense, and it produces something called interferon, which interferes with viral replication and enhances the effectiveness of natural killer cells and macrophages. So natural killer cells go and attack viruses and kill them. Macrophages go and gobble up stuff, okay? So these are parts of your innate immune system, and it also interferes and stimulates the production of antibodies. So your body recognizes that virus when you face it again. And it gets your adaptive immune system ready to respond. So your innate immune system is working maybe several days before your adaptive immune system wakes up. So your innate immune system is very important to like hit it hard and get your adaptive immune system working. And the case with COVID, all the research is showing that COVID in, slows down, suppresses, kind of puts to sleep your innate immune system. And if you want to read a fascinating um, research part on that, on this document right here that you have called the Early Treatment Protocol for Respiratory Illness, there is a ton of material in this that we have put. We are focusing on the, the, the Dr. Water in tonight's presentation, but there are many other doctors to look at in here. But here on this very first page, it talks about this innate immune system and how um, impaired and delayed interferon is associated with risk of severe COVID-19. And people who usually have a poor outcome of COVID, it's because their innate immune system did not work fast enough, strong enough, and the virus caught up and created a cytokine storm before their immune system was able to overcome it, okay? Yes? Is everything you're going over tonight in some of these packets? Yes, okay. yes. Um, a lot is gonna be in here. And a lot of the science that we're kind of getting into right now is in this journal okay, article. So probably not the history. Um, not all the history, yeah. A little bit of the history, but not much. So let's talk about fevers for a moment. When you face a virus or bacteria or something, your body creates a fever. And the purpose for the fever is to get your innate immune response up and moving. And to slow down the reproduction of the virus, which is very susceptible to the heat. Now fevers also promote the movement of those white blood cells that get to the location of the virus. So when people get fevers, what is usually the first thing they do? 
try to take a try to take a Tylenol or an Advil or something, right? They try to take ibuprofen, something to stop the fever, you know, because the fevers don't feel good. But what we're doing when we do that is we are actually hindering our body's attempt to fight the virus. So unless your fever is getting high, like 103, 104, don't stop it. Let it do its work because the fever is your friend. It's the body's way of trying to kill the virus. Now, as I was saying earlier about um, COVID and how it suppresses interferon, some people say, oh, I had a very mild case. Like, I didn't get a fever at all. Like, oh, that's a really good thing. But the problem is that sometimes what the COVID is doing is it's slowing down your body's response. And it could actually, if you feel fairly good the first week, it's the second week or the third week, now you're getting really bad. You know, but by that point, the virus has just gone and replicated too fast, too quickly. So what we want to do is help the body's fever and even create an induced fever. So hydrotherapy is doing an induced fever because we are raising the core body temperature, creating an effect, an artificial fever. And this is activating and strengthening our innate immune response quicker. Now, there are many ways you can do this. A hot bath, a steam bath, a hot shower, um, the treatment we'll do tonight are different ways. But let me show you what you probably all have heard about. Saunas, right? Saunas. Saunas are another wonderful way to create an artificial fever. Now, in Finland and in those Nordic countries, saunas are very popular. In fact, there are almost as many saunas as there are people. And everybody has one in their house, okay? And sauna bathing is done by everybody. Children, parents, grandparents, everybody saunas. And then after your sauna, you cool down. You might jump in the frozen lake <laughs> or roll in the snow because <laughs> you're cooling down after you had that sauna. So they have done research. Now, in this article, in this medical journal, um, it mentions several points about this and explains how the saunas are actually working, some of the <coughs> science. But basically what it's doing is creating circulation and increasing white blood cell counts. So we talked about how hydrotherapy is boosting the immune system. So what happens is this hot followed by this cold is actually, and especially the cold, is boosting white blood cells, which is what's fighting <coughs> the disease, okay? And it decreases CRPT, which is the markers of inflammation in the body. And it, people who, they've studied people who do saunas in Finland, far fewer colds, even though they're living in a very cold climate. But the saunas are keeping them healthy. And interesting research has now been showing that in these countries where saunas were used, uh, are used a lot, there have been a lot fewer cases of COVID and deaths from COVID in comparison to other countries in Europe. Is there a correlation? So ending with the cold, we all like a hot shower, but who likes to end in cold? <laughs> Why end with cold? Because after the body core temperature has risen, you end with that brief exposure to cold because this causes vasoconstriction, trapping in the heat, rather than just letting it evaporate through peripheral vasculature, and it's also boosting white blood cell count, okay? So, take a hot shower in the shower in cold. It will constrict all those blood vessels, trap in the heat, and you will actually feel better. So let me just give you a quick little testimony. A couple days ago, I start feeling like coming out with sore throat, you know, just feeling a, like a little bit of headache, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm coming, I, I know, I stayed up too late a couple nights and I had some sugar recently I don't normally eat, and I'm sure that uh, my immune system is tanking, right? So what do we do when we first start feeling signs that something's coming on? Hydrotherapy. That's my first thing along with vitamin C, vitamin D, take all my herbs and, and such, which you can read about a lot more in this document. But one of my go-tos is a hot and cold contrast shower, okay? This is a form of hydrotherapy and it's very easy to do. 
So you, you get in your shower and you take a hot, you get hot. You don't want to go to the cold until you're really warm, okay? Hot, and it's feeling really hot in here right now. <laughs> you take in this hot shower and then you move it toward the cold. Now the first time, I can't go all the way to the cold because it shocks me, right? I go over as much to like cool, okay? And then what I find works best for me to keep me from like screaming or anything like that is just rub, okay? But this is again, cold friction rub, which is again, stimulating the nerves and it keeps me from like, I can handle it, okay? I'm, I'm, Okay, and then after 20 seconds or so, go back to the hot. Get really hot. Oh, so hot. And I'm getting, I can take a little bit hotter now because I was just in the cold. Go back and forth like that three times, ending with the cold. And by the time you get to that third or fourth time, you're actually really warm and your skin is pink. Pink skin is a sign of what? Good circulation, right? End with the cold. It, and you walk out feeling wonderful. And what you've just done is you've taken your white blood cell count and you've boosted it super high. I have friends who are physicians, been working on COVID floors for this whole time. They come home from the hospital, first thing they do, take a hot and cold shower. Boost their immune system after just having been exposed to the virus. Okay. How long do they need to be in the hot water? Well, I, I'd say several couple, several minutes, you know, you want to be nice and nice and warm. And then when you're like hot, the cold actually is going to feel really good. And then you go back to the hot, back to the cold. Okay. Way more longer and hot than cold. Interesting article on the, from the journal Applied Physiology that was just looking at how cold exposure boosts natural killer cells, lymphocytes, monocytes. These are all part of your white blood cells. And if you want to learn more about this, there is a link in the Early Treatment Protocol for Respiratory Illnesses handout underwater that covers um, this and other subjects. There are several YouTube links in there from some different physicians that are studying hydrotherapy in relation to um, respiratory illness. So, as we kind of wrap up this part, in the book, Ministry of Healing, and we have some copies of this book here on our table. We're welcome to, you're welcome to take one. This book was written in 1905. This was written during the time when hydrotherapy was being well used in the United States. Listen to what it says about water. In health and sickness, pure water is one of heaven's choicest blessings. Its proper use promotes health. It's the beverage which God provided to quench the thirst of animals and men. Drink, drunk freely, it helps to supply the necessities of the system and assist nature to resist disease. The external application of water, that's what we're talking about, hydrotherapy, is one of the easiest and most satisfactory ways of regulating the circulation of the blood. A cold or cool bath is an excellent tonic. Warm baths open the pores and aid in the elimination of impurities. Both warm and neutral baths soothe the nerves and equalize the circulation. But many have never learned by experience the beneficial effects of the proper use of water and are afraid of it. Water treatments are not appreciated as they should be. And this is way more true today than it was in 1905. And to apply them skillfully requires work that many are unwilling to perform. But none should feel excused for ignorance or indifference on this subject. There are many ways in which water can be applied to relieve pain and check disease. All should become intelligent in its use and simple home treatments. That's why you're here tonight, right? Because you want to become intelligent in how to use these simple home treatments. Hydrotherapy can be such a blessing in our lives and to help us bless other people's lives and bring healing to them. And I believe that God is wanting us to return back to some of these old paths and old ways of doing things. Today, people rely far more on a drug or a doctor. And I think we're going to get to a point where we might not be able to rely on the medical community anymore. And they may not even be available to us, you know. So why not go back to the old ways, as God says, and where the good way is, walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. So this time we're going to do a yes. Um, is it is it is it safe if you're pregnant? 
Um, yes. Do that and cold showers. Yeah, and sometimes with some things you just may want to do a more mild treatment. Okay. Um, and that is especially true for the ones we're going to be doing. If a person is elderly or if a, if a child, you sometimes just do a more mild treatment. Um, if a person's diabetic, for example, you don't want to do a vast change between hot and cold. Or if a person has high blood pressure, it could maybe be too stimulating. So in cases like that, you're just doing a 20 degree difference in temperature. Um, so sometimes you just modify things to make things less intense. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to do, uh, we're gonna do a quick uh, switch here of stuff so we can set up for our demo. that's called hydrotherapy treatment or fomentation treatments with foot back. See that handout in there? We're gonna be going through that handout through the rest of the evening. I'm gonna get my copy here. So here's your definition. A fomentation is just a therapeutic local application of warm, moist, hot pack or compress to the body surface. A fomentation pad is usually made of a blanket material. Now tonight we are going to be using towels because that's something all of you have access to. But um, a true fomentation pad is more of a material like this. Okay? This is very thick. It's usually half wool and half cotton. The cotton holds in moisture and the wool holds in heat. Yes. Um, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, first of all, forgive my ignorance, what is the difference between a sanitarium and a hospital? Okay, yes. So sanitariums were more like lifestyle centers that focused more on holistic health um, so you're learning about diet and nutrition, exercise, fresh air, water. They focus more on natural things. Um, Were they all Seventh-day Adventists? Not, no, not all of them. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church was uh, foremost in the many sanitariums. Yes. Um, but actually, Dr. Kellogg went to school at a lifestyle center that was in New York. Um, before he came and started the Battle Creek Sanitarium. So it was being taught in other places as well. Now with the invention of penicillin in 1928, um, and then pharmaceutical drugs and the FDA and all that, there was a shift away from using these type of treatments to using more prescription drugs, which were more easily able to be administered and didn't require so much effort. But the problem with that is now, you get sick and you rely on going to the doctor to get help rather than being able to do something at home that is free and using things that you already own. So that's why you don't hear about it anymore. That's right. Yeah, we've Follow become, <laughs> we have followed the dollar, yes. Okay, so this is a room fomentation um, pad and we will also often use something that's wool to wrap around that moist compress because that is gonna keep it um, hotter longer. Now this is a contrast treatment, so we're gonna be doing hot and cold alternating that. We're gonna be doing a hot foot bath in connection with it, and the purpose of that is gonna to be to help heat the whole body up. This is a whole body warming treatment. And then we're doing the cold friction rub, which is doing that cold aspect that's boosting the white blood cell count and helping to um, boost the circulation. Now, in the physiological effects, you will see all the different things this is accomplishing. We've already talked about these, 
but you can go home and have this to remember how it's boosting your immune system, it's increasing um, blood flow. Now, there are some times when you would not use this treat. So on the top of page two is a list of contraindications, that word just means when not to use, or cautions. So you would not use this treatment if you have loss of skin sensation due to paralysis or stroke, because we don't want to burn someone, right, if they can't feel it. If someone has a tendency to hemorrhage, because this is a body circulatory um, treatment. If there is a malignant tumor in the area, this could spread, help could spread. We don't want that to happen. Um, an open wound, lymphedema, an unconscious person, someone who has Berger's disease, which is related again to a circulation. Um, and then there are some precautions there if you have hypertension or if you have neuropathy in your feet due to diabetes. You do not want to do a hot, hot foot bath because you could burn. Okay, so the water should be no more than 102. And then it mentions edema, varicose veins, advanced peripheral vascular disease. Again, we're only gonna use a 20 degree difference between the hot and the cold. So for example, 101 for the hot and only 81 for the cold, or maybe 95 for the hot and 75 for the cold. And we would not go above 102 degrees, okay? And Renaud's syndrome is a person who's very um, adverse to the cold. So in that case, you don't want the cold water to be um, anything below 70 degrees. Okay, so these are would be things to keep in mind. For the cold friction rub, we wanna make sure the person doesn't have infected, damaged skin, lesions, bruises, varicose veins, and we don't wanna cause any um, damage to that. And if a person is dealing with pleurisy, which is an inflammation of this layer in your lungs, then we would avoid doing the cold friction rub on their chest. <clears throat> now, let's look at the equipment list. So we're going to talk about what we need in a setup, okay? So we are today doing our treatment on a massage table. Most of you probably do not have a massage table at home. I don't either. <laughs> so, I yes? Um, if you don't have any of those diseases, what is the range of the cold temperature and the range of the hot temperature? Yes, so for that one, it would be, um, and I, I think it, it's mentioned in here uh, on the next page, somewhere here it's mentioned. Um, it would be more like between 104 to 110 for the foot bath, and then the cold would be more in like the 50s to 70 range. 50 to 70? Yeah, and we're not really going to be measuring the temperature of our water, it's just going to be water that has ice in it, so it's cold water. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about our um, table here. So we have a massage table. What would you do if you didn't have a massage table, okay? There are many weight places you could do this treatment. It can be done on a bed, okay? It can be done on a couch. It can be done in a recliner chair. It could be done on the floor, okay? So use whatever place you have. If your patient is too sick to go somewhere and they're just laying on the couch and can't get off the couch, you can do it right there on the couch, okay? So it's very adaptable. We're using a plastic uh, piece of cloth here. This is just a plastic tablecloth. You can use a garbage bag, something waterproof so it's not getting your surface wet, okay? And then over that, you're going to put a sheet. So we're gonna put our sheet here. And then you've got a pillow for your patient's head because you want them to be comfortable. You're gonna want to put a towel down at the bottom where you're going to have their hot foot bath. So we're gonna be having a hot foot bath right here. And I think we should start to get some hot water in there. Hopefully our thing down here is still cooking away too. Turn that back on. We have an electric tea kettle for extra hot water. Okay, so what other things you're gonna need is towels or um, fomentation pads, but for our purposes, we're gonna be using towels. And in a moment, Kim's gonna show you how we're gonna get these towels hot. There are different ways you can use it. You're gonna need towels that are the ones that are going on the chest and or on the back. <coughs> and then you're gonna need dry towels that you're wrapping them in to help trap in the heat. You're going to need 
Um, extra towels. So if a hot spot is forming or it's like, oh, that's really too hot, you can put another layer in between. You don't want to burn anybody. And you're going to need some washcloths, one to keep their head cool with some cold water that's going to go on their head and some that can be used for the cold friction rub, okay? So uh, towels and then we're going to have to need some blankets. <clears throat> I have here a wool blanket. Wool is very good because it keeps things very warm, okay? It's trapping in heat. So we have a wool blanket and we also have here a flannel blanket. If your house is hot, you may only need one, but we want to get the patient warm, okay? Or creating a fever, okay? So you might need more than one blanket. You want to have your treatment happening somewhere where there isn't a lot of drafts and cold, right? Because that would be counterproductive. Okay, a couple other things that you want to have. Um, here is a thermophore. This is like a heating pad. <coughs> And we're actually going to use this today on the back of our, for our patient. This one actually comes with a little cloth, but I'm not going to really use that. We're going to use a damp hand towel instead. But this is going to be placed on the patient's back. Now we could use another hot towel, but we're making things easy today. Actually, I already have a washcloth in there. Okay, we're making things a little easier today and we're not gonna worry about um, changing the back and keeping the back hot. This is going to accomplish that for us, okay? And these thermophores um, are designed to be deep heat and putting a, a damp towel is gonna create moisture, so it's gonna be a moist heat, which is even more effective. This particular one um, stays on and then shuts off. Um, you can get others that you hold it on. Um, and you can look, the links to these are in your papers, okay? You could use a, a regular heating pad if you have something like that too, okay? All right, let's see. Anything else we need? Oh, we need a thermometer to test the temperature of our water. And it's good to take some vital signs first. So having a something that takes um, blood pressure. If a person is dealing with COVID, you might want to also use a pulse oximeter. And the pulse oximeter is gonna check their oxygen level. And what we would like to do is take their vitals before the treatment and afterwards. And you might even see their oxygen levels will go up after the treatment. That's really exciting to see, especially if their oxygen levels have been borderline. Since you have a question. Yes. What's the difference between that in the box mm -hmm. and a heating pad? Okay, so this um, works, I think, better. Um, it has this really nice uh, fomentation cover that's over it. Okay, you notice this is the same material as this pad right here. So this is helping to keep the heat <clears throat> trapped in here very nicely. Um, and then it, you can, there is a place inside of it there's a pocket inside of it where you can put a damp cloth, okay? So that has created a moist heat environment. So that makes it a little different than the regular heating pad, okay? I think that is, oh, we have some gloves for our hands. We've got some water for the patient so they can stay well hydrated. And I think those are all of our things. Ice so, cold water. Yes, we're gonna be having, so I'm gonna have Kim explain how to get your pads heated. And this is covered on the next page. So Kim, come okay. and explain that for us. All right. So to heat the pads, I, I don't have my thing up here with me. Yeah. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see there's a couple of different methods. Go ahead. There's the, um, the boiling water method. Um, we're, not, we're not using that right now, but essentially it's just taking, um, you just boiling water and then you would twist your towel. Now this is a small one, but for the pads, the moist pads that you put inside, you use a larger towel. And just for demonstration purposes, you would, you would twist the towel dip it into the hot pot, not all the way because you're, you're going to burn your fingers unless you have some um, gloves on, 
and then you wring it out as much as you can. Just, you really wring it. You don't want it wet. It's just really supposed to be damp. You just want moist heat. So you wring it and you might twist it and twist it and just really wring as much out of it as you can. And that is going to um, make your, your wet pad. Now, uh, did you want me to demonstrate with water? No, not for that. Okay, because I thought you were going to use this one on, on yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. we do need, we do okay. need one for that. You can also do microwave. Do you have the plastic bag here? Yeah. Okay. So the, this is the first way that I learned how to do this, is that I wet it and I wrung it out as much as I could, and then I would fold it um, based on how it was going to go on the patient. So you just kind of fold it. What we did is we just kind of rolled it up. You stick it in this, just the Meyer bag or the whatever plastic bag that you have. Just throw it up like that. You stick it in the microwave for about three or four minutes so it's good and hot, really hot. And then that heats your pad. And that's what you use for the pad. Mm -hmm. So very simple method. So there's many methods that you can use. Tonight we're using the oven method. Mm -hmm. And so I have a couple of um, cookie sheets. And I just simply, I, I kind of feel like I cheated tonight. Oh, I love this cheat. But <laughs> I've done it, on, I've done this treatment um, three or four times now. And taking one of these towels, wetting it, and just wringing it, wringing it, it's like, oh my gosh, what a workout. It's a great workout, but it is mm -hmm. intense. And so I thought, oh, I've got a wash machine that I can just rinse and spin. And it was perfect. So tonight's <laughs> towels were rinsed and spun in my washer. I folded them, I laid them nice on a cookie sheet, put um, foil over top of them, and they're good to go. They're on 400 in the oven. <laughs> so I'm hoping that they didn't, this is the first time we've did it, done it that method in the oven, so at least for us, right? Have yeah. you done it that way? I haven't, no, no. I know people do it, so. Right, right, so I went in the kitchen and it, does it smell like it's burning? <laughs> I hope not because <laughs> this is so much for our, our experiment. But anyway, so yeah, just be creative. Be creative in how you do it. You just need a moist towel and you, and, and one of the tricks is, is to fold it so that it's really easy once, because it's really hot, you don't want to handle it too much and you want to maintain the, the heat so you don't want to fiddle with it so much that it's cooling off too much and it's not going to be useful for you. So you try to fold it so that when you take it out, you can just place it where you need to place it, wrap it, and put it on the patient. There you go. So I think that's all you really needed to know from me. Yes. All right. Thank you. And I'll take my hand out. Yes. So I <laughs> well, you take your hand out. Where are we going next? I'll keep my glasses. Okay. We are about ready to work with our patient. We have our room already. There are no drafts. It's nice and warm. We have our basic set up here. And now we are going to meet with our patient. So, Rich, come on over here. Rich is our patient. Rich, are you sick? You're not feeling well tonight, are you? <laughs> <laughs> He's got some congestion in his chest, right? Yeah, and a pounding headache. And a pounding and headache. My back hurts. Your back. My knees hurt. Oh, man, you just have the aches oh, all just, over, don't awful. you? It's yeah, awful. okay. <laughs> He is a sick boy. We are going to make him better tonight, all right? So what we want to first do is we want to ask him if he has any of these contraindications. Do you have any problems with hemorrhaging or lymphedema? Do you have hypertension? Are you diabetic? No. Hyper, but not tension. <laughs> <laughs> any open wounds? <laughs> any <laughs> cancer in your chest? Okay. So he's a healthy patient besides not being healthy right now, okay? So we clear him for contraindications. This would be especially important if you were doing this for somebody you didn't really know very well, okay? Because you want to be, um, you want to make sure you're not causing more harm than we're trying to cause good, right? Um, and then the next thing we want to do is take some vital signs. So Rich, if you would slip this on your arm and it's going to go on is this the right one mary lou yeah just line it up line look it up the, look at the picture of it look at the picture oh i see the picture right there okay see the picture turning that on and then you're going to set this over your heart come on that's it and now you have a sheet that says hydrotherapy charting 
So this is where you record things that um, we learn. And Karen, you mind handing me a pen? I don't have a pen up here. Oh, you have a Awesome, you have come well prepared, patient. Okay, so we write the patient's name down and what treatment we're giving them. Then we're gonna record here um, the vital signs because we wanna take those at the beginning and also at the end. This is gonna take a moment here. And the reason you want to keep a record of things is because you wanna see if there's progress as you're going along. And this can be helpful for that. And also, if you're working with their physician or they wanna to talk to their physician, they have a record of what you have done for them. So this can um, be good for your records and for their records. Did it go up? Okay. Am I still alive? You are still alive. So 148, 33, false 63. Alrighty, very good. Thank you very much, Patient. Okay, what's next on my protocol? Oxygen. Oh, take an oximeter. Uh, just for fun. Let's see what's your oxygen level is. Let's pretend he has COVID. We're gonna see what he's at. toward the 80s, that's not good. Okay, so we have taken his vitals now. What we do is we explain to the patient what we're gonna be doing. So Rich, today what we're gonna be doing is a fomentation treatment. This is gonna create moist heat on your chest, which is gonna help recirculation to your lungs, help with that bronchitis you've got going on right there. We're gonna be doing a hot flow bath, which is going to help with the head congestion because it's gonna take the congestion that's in your head and it's gonna take that extra blood flow and move it towards your feet and help relieve congestion in your head. Um, it's also full warming treatment, so you're going to be hot. We're gonna keep your head cool with cold water so that you don't get overheated because um, your brain doesn't like to get too hot. Um, and what this is going to do is it's gonna create an induced fever, which is gonna help your body fight the virus that you're facing right now, okay? Any questions that you have? Okay, wonderful. All right, so we have explained our treatment to him, and now the next very important thing that we are going to do is pray with our patient. God, we ask that you bless Rich, that he will feel better, because we know you are the great physician. May you use these natural remedies you have given us to help him find relief. In Jesus' name, amen. So Rich, you can go, um, I think that's about all we need to do now. So what we're gonna do is get this, this is already heating up. Um, do we have the moist one to go inside of here? Can we get a moist towel to put in here? <coughs> that just do right here? Uh, yeah, that works. That works. So Rich, if you want to slip your shoes and socks on, and just take a seat right here. And this is going to be going where your back is at. Yeah, roll up your pant legs. We don't want to get those up on the seat. Oh, that might make it easier. Why don't you do that? Yeah. Yes, you can. All right, he, our patient is gonna. Here's a. He's got shorts on. No worries. That was scary. <laughs> I didn't know what you're coming for. <laughs> chest because it's actually best to do it on the bare skin so if you are um, a female what you can do for females for modesty they could wear a bathing suit or a sports bra or you could um, or they could just wear a bra and a tank shirt if needed so but it's best if they can have as much of their skin exposed what I discovered last night, if I could interject, or Monday when we were you practicing, she yeah. was doing it on me, and I've given some, I've given them, but I've never had it done on me, and so I wore my bathing suit. The bathing suit ends up getting too wet, yeah. and it burns more easily, because what you really want is a moist heat, not wet, and so that's why 
when she does this, she's going to put a dry towel if that towel gets too wet that's next to his skin. So just be careful with that. That's just my personal experience of having it done on me using a bathing suit. So if at all possible, it's best not to um, um, have you know, stay as modest as we can. But better to use a sports bra than a bathing suit. I think it would be because then you're also getting more of your abdomen yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think that would probably work. Better. Yep. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is get his hot foot back going and it's 104. Okay. Where's my thermometer? So we have a little thermometer here. Bought it on Amazon. It came today. Ordered it yesterday. Ordered it yesterday, it came today. It Extra says shipping. it's at 102, which is a little bit, it would, this would be perfect if you were dealing with a diabetic. But I'm gonna add a little bit extra hot water to this. I want it to be closer to 104. I'm going to have you bend your knees, and I'm going to set this right here. Put your feet to the side. There you go. All right, and then I'm going to have gently lower your feet into the water. You tell me if it's too hot. No. All right. And you want to have the hot foot bath kind of coming up to their ankles if possible. Okay. Then we're going to cover the sheet and Pull it tight so that it's not doesn't drip into the water because you don't want to get it wet. Are those just cotton sheets? These are just cotton it's sheets, wet. yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna put this blanket over. And Kim, where did you get this really nice wool blanket? Massage warehouse. Massage warehouse. That's yeah. an online hmm. store. Online store. It's catalog and online. Yep. These, these are like the kind you find in the Army Surplus yeah. store. Where did you get it? Yep. Uh, massage Warehouse. Warehouse. Massage online. Warehouse. Massage Warehouse. I got two of them, so it's, they're, they're pretty decently priced. They're not outrageous. Okay, we are now ready to put the first pack on the chest, okay? So over here, let me grab my vinyl gloves. I don't want to burn myself. These have come out of the oven. This is so much fun. I'm so excited about this method. Right? I know. Because burn the towels. Because <laughs> we, we did the microwave method the other night. We did. Right. And we ran back and forth between the microwave. Right. So take one. Yeah, you know, one of them kind of did something. It is steaming. Yeah. I'm going to put the other one back in the oven. Let me take this. Okay. Woo! It's hot. I'm going to set this just for a second. 400. For, wow, well, it's been in there a long time. <laughs> but, but if you're doing this at home, it'll be more like 20 minutes, half hour. <laughs> okay, this is a very hot pack. Okay, now, before we put that on, we want to make sure we have um, a layer or two on the chest because we do not want our patient burning. I'm going to start with two, and we can remove one if we need to. And then place this over Rich's chest and make sure it's covering everything so that there isn't going to be any area that's being exposed to the heat. And now we're placing this right over his chest and wrapping everything up. And you want to make sure Here, quick second, because I don't want to get my sheet in the water. Yeah, I just want to get it up above around his neck. Oh, I see. Because you don't want any drafts. We're trying to trap the heat. Okay. How's that feeling, Rich? Toasty warm. Toasty warm. Time to take a nap. Time to take a nap. You won't be napping here very much. This is not, if, a, if your patient feels like napping, you're doing the treatment wrong. Because <laughs> this is not 
just a nice cozy nap. This is a warming, we are creating a fever tonight. <laughs> fever. All right, how is that feeling on your chest? Is it feeling too hot yet? No. Okay, it may take a little while for that heat to start to go down through those towels. So if it starts to feel too warm, just let me know and we'll either put another little towel under there or lift it up. Um, we don't want you to burn. How's the one on your back feeling? Can you feel the Great. heat back there? Yeah. You it can. Good. Does it feel moist, like a moisty? Because um, I put really the good. I put that um, moist towel inside of it. And How's the temperature in the feet? How is your feet feeling? Good. Feeling good? Okay. It could be warmer. But it could be warmer. Oh, I love to hear that. All right. So it's at 104 right now. We could get it up to 110. So let's work on getting it up a little bit higher because the more hot it is, the faster this whole treatment is going to happen. Now, Rich, what I want you to do is just set your feet on the edges. Yes, there you go. I don't want to burn you when I add this hot water. Okay, you want to use your hand to mix it up so there aren't any hot spots in there. <coughs> All right, Rich, let's put your feet back in there and see how that feels. That's better. That feels better? Yep. Okay. And if it cools down and you say, hey, I could take more, we'll give you more. So where did you get the fomentation blanket? Oh, this blanket? Oh, that one. Oh, that one. <laughs> My mom got these back when I was a child because oh. I have been having these treatments on me since I was a kid. Set the timer for four minutes. So um, that's the four minutes fermentation path. path. So you can't find them. Then? You can. They're hard to find. Um, you might have an easier time finding the material and kind of creating and cutting your own. Um, so what is it made of? It the best is going to be fifty percent wool and fifty percent cotton. And if you like, I'm happy to have this passed around, and you guys can all kind of feel what it feels like. That will hold heat a lot longer than towels. There's work. a big difference when you use that. Yeah, it's a nice, thick material. And where would you get it if you found one? If you find that answer, let me know because I don't know. <laughs> We're looking for I wish, them. I, yeah, I wish I, I knew exactly what it was. I, I like to even know what it's called. Rich, how's your head? Are you feeling like you're getting a little warm? No. Not yet. Okay. Foot bath, he says, needs to be hotter. All righty. Check with Joanne's bath. Foot bath is going to be hotter. Okay. Oh, you mean just a piece of paper? Yeah. I mean, it can take a minute. Just hold it up. Oh, no, I'm going to fill it up more because I like it to be up over in Staples. Oh, wow. That, yeah, I think, might have been too hot now. <laughs> Little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, this is good. That's, that's how it really is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little hot. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit hot. <laughs> that's mice. All right, well, we can fix this. Take a little of this ice water here. Okay, we can fix this. Don't put it in there. Okay, don't try it. Okay, I'm curious what the temperature is on it right now. Let's see. Probably about 115, 118. It's 118. You are a strong boy. Uh, what is the temperature? 118. Wow. Okay, so we have his packed um, a timer going right now. You can change these out. Remember, it said a short duration on the compresses is about five minutes. Um, we're, you can do three to five. Um, if you're doing a more mild treatment, I would do three. We're doing four tonight just for time sake. Um, but if you could do five and you have the time at home, um, do it. So we've got about another minute. Now what we're going to be doing when this um, timer goes off is we are going to be putting another hot pack on, but first, what is the important step in between? Cold, cold friction rub. So I need to get 
my washcloths ready. Get these in our ice water. So we have, and we're going to wring these out. We want drippy cold water, just cold damp water um, on those. And we're going to be doing a quick friction rub on his chest. That is going to be constricting the blood vessels that we've just dilated. And then we're gonna dry him off and then put another hot pack on so that we are um, ending and then repeating. And then we will cycle through that a few times. How's your head feeling at the moment? Good. Okay. Are you starting to feel the heat through your chest? You are awesome. Very good. It feeling is a, more in the back from the chest. Feeling a little is the back feeling too hot? No. Okay. Very good. You know what I'm going to do? Let's pull <clears throat> out. Okay. Well, that's the end of that. So the next time, I think I'll only put one layer in between. Okay. So we're <laughs> going to move this back. <clears throat> We are going to remove this pack. Yeah, it's still pretty warm. Okay. Do you want to reuse this towel or no? Um, yeah, we can reuse that until it gets damp. I'm actually going to do something a little different here. So I am wringing out my cold friction rub. Now, a way you can do this to help keep your patient modest, especially if you're dealing this on a woman, is to grab your towel and just exchange it like that. And then we are doing our cold friction rub for 20 to 30 seconds. It's cold. It's cold, good. <laughs> On a woman, you would avoid the breast tissue. All together or the rub, the rub part? The whole, all, all together, you can okay. do above, kind of the sternum, abdomen. Okay. All right, then after that, again, you would take the ends and just go like that. And that just keeps them from feeling exposed, okay? Make sure they're dry, okay? And then we're gonna get another foaming <coughs> patient ready. It's hot. It's hot. Yeah, it's okay. You got too dark. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it was in there too long. It was in there too long. <laughs> microwave set timer for four minutes four minutes starting now so I going to um, let's get another one going another hot one There's two more in there okay well if one of those yeah. are steaming let's bring that one out because this one I should we be maybe get right out it. huh we maybe got dried out that's possible yeah it was in there too long what happens if you don't rub when you put the cold on? Will just putting cold on it be enough or do you have to rub it? Well, the, the rubbing part is just, again, Stimulate. stimulating mm -hmm. circulation. And it's helping to um, get the, the blood vessels to constrict faster. But again, you don't wouldn't do it if, if the person has sensitive skin or something like that. I think this is better. All right. Oh, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> this, it did dry out. It did. Mm -hmm. Moisty is what you need. Okay. I thought. Straight on and see how that 
That's warmer. That's warmer? Okay, good. How's your back feeling? Good. Right. I think we're about time to do a little bit here on the forehead. We haven't done anything cold yet to the back or Correct. We don't do that until the very end. Oh. Yep. We're only doing the chest. want our patient to stay well hydrated, especially if they start sweating a lot. It's important to give them something to drink. And the straw helps with that. This one's getting a little warm on the chest. Getting a little warm on the chest. All right. So what we're going to do is put something in between. Actually, let's do this. Okay. Um, he's got the uh, hand towel and then the folded fomentation. How's your feet? Is your foot bath cooled down? Well, inside wrap um, a little bit. A little bit. I move my toes this corner. Okay, well, so wiggle, wiggle your toes a little bit. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll heat that up in a minute. Okay, he's starting to he's starting to warm up because I see. Beads of sweat starting to form on his chin. This is a good sign. Thank you. Any questions at this point? So how many times a day do you do this? You, if the patient could tolerate it, I would do it two to three, um, especially if they're very sick. Um, and this is actually maybe a good time to uh but well, we have 30 seconds so as soon as we swap this out we'll tell you a little story about uh fomentation treatments and covid how many yes. different sessions are you doing a day uh, yeah that was the question that was asked okay. and i said i would do maybe two to three if they can handle okay. it but then um if they can do have them do the hot and cold contract showers too and you can do um a hot steam, a hot bath, which is just submerging them in hot water and keeping their head cold, and then ending with a cold shower afterwards, and it will accomplish some of the same thing. This one's just more localized for the chest. Okay, so at this point, we are going to get ready to do our friction rub. have you start getting another one ready. It helps if you have an assistant who can be getting you um, getting you a new fomentation while you are doing the friction rub. That way you don't have a lot of time in between and you don't have um, your patient exposed because as they're getting hot and sweaty, they could get chilled very easily when they're not covered. How's that cold feeling? A little bit better this time, huh? Better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feels a little bit better. Not near as cold. Not near as cold. You see how his chest is getting a little pink there? This is a good sign. This is what we want. Okay. I'm going to just cover you with that for just one moment while we get these next hot ones in here. to a second hand store, find towels, old towels, you know those ugly towels in your house that you just like, why am I keeping these here? And um, use those as your fomentation pads. Okay, feet is cooling down. So let's get some hot water in there. I 
to keep their head cool. You might even be covering their entire head with a, a cold rag. You could, you could drape this around his neck, up through his neck, um, if he's getting really hot, okay? Because you don't want him overheating. Okay, now we're gonna set that, set timer for four minutes. Yeah, yes. Four minutes, counting down. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hot flashes. Oh, can you do it while you're having a hot flash? What's the question? Yes, or before or after, or just to help you. <clears throat> That's a good question. I'm not sure really what the answer is, because uh, I wonder, a hot flash is kind of like an internal furnace, isn't it? <laughs> so it might help. I don't know. I might want to ask that to some of the hydrotherapy therapists that I work with and uh, get the answer. That's a good question. All right, well that is um, heating up. I'm gonna have uh, Pastor Steve come up here and share our brief testimony. Um, back <coughs> last Christmas <laughs> time frame, Christmas. Merry Christmas. we spent Merry Christmas at home with COVID. <laughs> and uh, this was one very sick man. So, uh, and I had what they call a moderate case and uh, I was sick, you know, it was, it pays to do this stuff and do it early. And um, you'll notice, Stacy put on the board, don't take aspen, ibuprofen, or acetaminophen because it lowers your fever. Well, we didn't take any of that stuff. And what that means is you deal with a lot of discomfort, right? You because those pain relief. And I just kind of toughed through it because I didn't want to, to break that fever, right? But uh, what you'll notice when you're not taking those, feet, those pain relievers, this does more than an aspirin. And you will feel fantastic after you do one of these fomentations or the hot bath or one of the you know the hot and cold treatment and uh, it really does more than aspirin you'll sleep better and everything else so we did do this i think at least twice a day yeah. for um for the at least the worst week of covid and uh it and really was, made the difference i was sick too but i did, wasn't as sick as he was so i was mm -hmm. able to continue to do these treatments for him. She had about three or four days when she was really bad. So there was like three or four days we were both really in bad condition. And I'm like, can barely keep my head up and I'm taking the ring out the cold water, putting it on her head. <laughs> and then I rest and then she's like, okay, I need some more cold. So, so that, that was, was when I was in the tub. <laughs> yeah, right, so it was, um, yeah, it's better to have, like she says, better to have You really assistant. enjoyed the tub baths too. We did several the induced of induced fever in the tub works really yeah, well. and then yeah. we did these. Um, but you'll need the cold, the cold compress when you're doing the induced fever in the tub. You'll need that thing continuously because you will get overheated fast. You don't need it quite as much here, quite as frequent. But uh, it really makes a difference, and it's the one thing, the only thing that made me feel better when I had COVID. Yeah. So, yes, Pam. Question. So did it keep you out of the hospital? Oh, yes. I believe every... Without a doubt, it kept me out of the hospital. So after two, and I went to the I went to the urgent the urgent care, and um, I had you know a pretty heavy cough at this point, and uh, they did a chest X-ray, and I had double pneumonia, mm -hmm. and she said you have to go to the hospital right now, but we already knew we were coming out of it. You were already improving. Your symptoms yeah, had been improving. Yeah, I was already on the day. rise. Your fever and was already gone. <laughs> it wasn't an option for me, but she told me. Do not go home, go straight to the hospital. So um, that's kind of where I was at, but in the very next couple of days, I really yeah. rose If his symptoms levels. had been getting increasingly worse, I, I, we may have taken you to the hospital at that point, but I was noticing his symptoms were improving, and when I counseled with some different doctor friends of mine, they said, if you're still doing the treatments, he's feeling better, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And we did, are yeah. you getting too hot? 
No. Okay, you're coming. And you definitely won't get this in the hospital. <laughs> no, once you get there, you're not getting this. Yeah. Okay, this is our last, I think this is our last one. Do we have another one, Kim, after this, or is this the last one? One more. Oh, there's one more after this. Okay. I have a quick question. Yeah. Is that all you did was hypotherapy, or did you have any medications, or did you have anything else? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't take any medication the whole time. Um, we were doing most of everything else that's in that uh, respiratory illness protocol, though, like all the supplements and vitamins, and we were doing herbs. And C, vitamin D. Yeah. So instead, instead of this, you could sit in a hot tub for yes. five minutes, and then um, I would do it longer in, in the tub. Yeah, you're gonna you would stay in there like 15, 20 minutes. And then do cold for how long? You would just be ending with cold for that. You wouldn't be doing the back and forth. The cold is just you, on your head. Yeah, keep the your, cold. Keep yeah. your head from getting too hot because oh. you'll get really, really warm, and the ice just balances you out on your on your okay. forehead. Okay, so you just do that three times a day too in the hot tub with the cold. As much as you feel like it. Yeah. Well, the fever bath. The, the tub is the whole point is to bring your body temperature up to 102 mm -hmm. and so you stay there at 102 you keep it at 102 for about 20 minutes after that you drain the tub that's why you need you need to have a cold rag for your head you need to have if you don't have an assistant if you're by yourself I was by myself my husband was out of town <laughs> and I was doing it myself and um, Oh, this is the microwave. Yeah. Yeah, this is the microwave. So, right yeah. And so it was, you know, I had the ice water there with me. I had my thermometer. I had my, um, I, I did um, feverfew, what was it, feverfew or yarrow? One of those herbs that I was using in a tea. And I just kept my temperature. It was 102.5 for about 20 minutes. Drain the water. And then this is the fun part. You take that ice bucket of water you were using. <laughs> And you just suck it up and you dump it on yourself. <laughs> and then you get out, you dry out. It actually kind of feels good, sort of. <laughs> kind, of kind of maybe a wrong way, I don't know. But you keep a cloth on, a cold cloth on you your keep, head. You yeah. keep, when you, you get don't out. want your head to get too hot. You, you want, you, the whole point is for your body to, to do all those things that she was saying. So after that, you dry off and you go to bed. Why you just don't you rest. have to go back and forth, cold, hot, cold, hot, in the tub thing like you do here? So for this treatment, you are just stimulating more, um, it's a localized fomentation, because we're focusing on his chest. He's got an upper, he's got a chest congestion. So this is helping to bring increased circulation to this area. With a fever bath, you're doing more of a whole body immune boosting situation. Yeah. And the cold at the end, is it's kind of like the same sauna idea you know you sit in the sauna and then you take the cold afterwards um, to kind of um, trap in all that um, warmth inside your body yes uh, so it's a general rule that regardless of the, the method of hydrotherapy you always end with cold yeah right okay yeah cold is then, always at the end shouldn't you also rest for 20 minutes, yes. 30 minutes yes. afterwards? You do want to rest afterwards. Or for 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this right before going to bed and then you'll sleep really good. <laughs> okay, so we're on our last pack right here. Yes. So would that be the same thing like if you do the sauna and then maybe get the cold shower? Yes, and then, yes. And then go back in the sauna or no? Um, you could go back and forth if you wanted to. Um, it would, would not hurt. Yeah. You can stay in the sauna, sweat, sweat, sweat. Um, make sure you're drinking lots of fluids as you're sweating. And then get in a cool shower. So what they do in Finland is they sit in the sauna, run out, jump in the snow, jump in the ice water, jump back into the sauna. If you, if you live, I remember once being sick um, when I was traveling and there, I was at a hotel and they had a jacuzzi tub and a cold pool. I yeah. sat in the jacuzzi tub, got really hot, jumped in the cold pool, jumped back in the jacuzzi tub, and did that back and forth, and wow, that worked awesome. Same idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have an infrared sauna at home, and my husband kind of prefers that, so he'll go sit in the sauna, and then he'll go finish with a, hot, with a cold shower, and then go to bed. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, you had a question back here, Drew? Yeah. Stacy, if you didn't want to do this yourself, is there professionals that have offices that give this service? 
I wish that was the case. We're working on it. But the problem is that most um, doctors and physicians are not trained in this in medical school. Well, not physicians, they just. There are sometimes lifestyle centers that are trained in these areas. Um, is it too hot in your feet? Yeah, or you just finish? Okay. <laughs> what would be the closest one? Here? Uh, Call us up and have us come help you. <laughs> Well, there's lifestyle centers in other states. We, yes. We don't have one right now in Michigan, a lifestyle center, but there's uh, what there was Black one Hills, Hills Mission Black College. Black Hills, yeah. I thought there was one in Troy. There might be. Is there one in Troy? There used to be. Hmm. Yeah, there used to be one down in. Uh, <laughs> All right, I think we are ready to end this treatment. Okay, so let me explain what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be ending with the cold and then as you look at your protocol we're doing then a cold friction rub on the body okay so we're going to be starting with the chest and then from there we are going to um the arms and then the back and then the feet okay so we're going to end How did this feel for you, Rich? Good. Okay. Oh, this Rich is not sick tonight, but this treatment we have just done for him has just boosted his immune system in a great way. So he is the healthiest person in the room tonight. <laughs> we'll go home with good white blood cells, and he's going to sleep really well tonight. <clears throat> we have done him a great service. So even if you are not really sick yet, you're just starting to come down with something, you could do this right away and it will already get you um, on the right track. Yeah? Uh, what about transplant patients who are supposed to keep their immune system suppressed? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I think that might be one of the... That would be one I would definitely want to question on because I know in the case with like certain herbs and stuff, you don't want to um, do ones that are boosting <clears throat> the immune system too much. So yeah, I would probably talk with your medical provider about that. You can share with them this paperwork and have them look at it and see what they advise. You see this really pinky chest right here? This is a good sign. Good sign of circulation. So now what we're gonna do is each limb, but every time you cover something, this warmed up already, so I'm gonna switch. Um, you wanna cut, keep them draped because you don't want any chilling to happen. Looks like Rich is sweating. He is sweating. He is sweating. He's gotten the full body treatment. I have another question. Now, I, I have a, a couple friends that have been just getting past COVID. I mean, they still have it. I yeah. guess they're still not feeling completely 100%. But would this help them a lot, even yeah. at the end or the middle? or Anytime. 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 It's most critical when you first get sick. Yeah, that's when your knee immune, immune system, system is kicking in, is at the very beginning. Yep. Some people do, on a daily routine, just a hot cold shower in the morning yeah. and then go to work. Yep. Just the three that's perfect for work. winter time. Take a hot cold shower. Every time you do, in with cold. You can buy a, uh, a shower timer, a timer, a shower cloth, with, you know, like the front face thing, hang the shower, we've done that. And, um, and so you kind of can time it three minutes hot. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to do your feet yet. I'm going to do your back first. Let's do your back first. Sit up. Yep, sit up. Oh, nice and pink. You see that, guys? He's almost done. Take your word for it. Ready for Thanksgiving. They got the third yeah. over there. Not quite good. Does that want to send it to somebody? It'll at least be on uh, our Facebook page. I don't do Facebook. Yep. Okay. We'll get it to you. Oh, that was awesome. It's big. It's, uh, 
It's an hour and 40 minutes. Already. And you always want to make sure they're thoroughly towel dry because you don't want any chilling, any dampness. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're going to end with the feet. So with the feet, what we're going to do, um, oh, it's done. <laughs> yeah, stretch it out. Little cramps. Okay, what we're going to do is put his feet in this bucket of ice water. I'm going to swap out this bucket. And Rich, you are putting your feet right in here. Woo, doesn't that feel good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rich, you are putting your feet about as close to the polar bear club as I can. <laughs> and your polar plunge for tonight. And even though we didn't do, you know, his extremities, he's still sweaty, you know? So that tells us that we accomplished what we were seeking to do, which was create a, an induced fever in his body. Okay, and now we're going to lift up your feet. I'll take that away. Put your feet down. And dry those up. Now, after his feet are dry, his feet are very nice and pink. Now this treatment right here, you just did the hot foot bath. It's excellent if you have a headache, any congestion. Um, you can do a, a five minute version for a nosebleed, menstrual cramps, excellent for all those. Now we are going to put socks on his feet because we don't want his feet getting cold. We want to keep that heat locked in. Send him to bed with socks on his feet. Man. So if you just socks are not very easy to put on, but oh, maybe it's upside down. Yeah, that's true. Those don't look like your socks, Rich. He brought these socks today. this treatment. They can just rest right where they're at or they can go straight to bed. I don't know, those seem a little bit small there, Rich. I have to adjust those in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to let rest, Rich just rest there for a moment. So you could just do the foot part, you not the whole thing, yeah. and you'd follow the same procedure of like three to five minutes, then do the cold, yeah. three to five minutes. So when I was getting that sore throat not long ago, um, I did this on myself, Okay. and, and I was feeling just a little bit of congestion, yeah. so my head a little bit, uh, a little headache. Okay. So yeah, I did that, and it felt so good. My, it was just like everything just like cleared afterwards. Do you do the same time, like the four minutes and the... Um, so with the foot bath, like it depends. Um, with the hot foot bath, if you're doing it more for like a, a head congestion yeah. and such, I would keep it in the hot until the end and then do the cold. Okay. okay? So like 20 minutes mm -hmm. or, um, or... Yeah, I did about 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, my husband is dealing with plantar fasciitis in his feet right now. So he's having a lot of heel pain. Mm -hmm. um, we did more of a hot, cold, hot, cold for him. Okay. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, cold. three minutes hot, 30 okay. seconds cold. So we went back and forth for that. Does it so, help? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. Um, our treatment is done. Our patient is resting. We're thanking the Lord for blessing with great um, treatment for him. And I want to um, end with a couple thoughts for you guys. One is, if you're at home alone, don't have someone to do a treatment on you, do not despair. <laughs> I put in your document a couple 
alternatives of options you can do to do a modified treatment. The key is to get your body core temperature up, and there are many ways to be able to do that. You could do it in a bath, you could do it in a hot shower. You know, if you don't have someone who can do something local for you, um, or if you have a hot pad at home, sit in a recliner and put that hot pad on your back um, and a hot towel on your chest. You know, do anything to help yourself and you're going to um, improve um, your health. And then a couple other things. We want to be a support to you. We feel like these are times when we need to pull together and help each other, right? And so a couple of things that we want to um, mention to you. On your table is a sign-up sheet. If you said, this is so informative, but I want to learn how to do this more, I want to actually be the patient and be the one doing it so I can practice. We want to do a lab where we can go through different treatments. We've only done one of like four or five different treatments you can do. But we can practice a hot possess. We can practice a fomentation. You can buddy up with a partner and do it on each other so that you learn and feel now more confident. We can be there to coach you. And then you can feel like I could go out and do this now for people. I can help someone when they're going through this. So if that's of interest to you, that may not be for everybody, but if that's of interest to you, write your name and contact info down on that sign-up sheet on your table, and we'll contact you when we have the details for that. Um, the documents that we've given you, we will email out to you. Feel free to share and pass those on. Um, if you have questions about something that's in there, reach out to us, email us, or call us. Let us know where we want to be there to assist and support you. And if you have friends who want to learn this, we're willing to come and do a class at your house and have a, a hydrotherapy party, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then a pepper chef party or something, you know? And uh, teach you and your friends together so that we can learn how to assist and help each other um, in these days when I think this is more and more important. And affordable. And it's free, yes. <laughs> um, the pad underneath, you only put a hot pad in at one time, right? Yes. And because it was plugged in, it's electric. Oh, it is. It oh, was okay. an electric heating pad, so it just kept um, doing it. I didn't even have to worry about it. Oh, it was just doing its own thing. So that. So could you do that on his back and his chest? Yeah, if you had two. Yeah, which is a way you could do it for yourself if you didn't have right. someone there. If you had two hot pads, you could be doing that for yourself. In fact, uh, Marilyn, you did that when you had COVID. She, I brought her my heating, two heating pads, and she sat and did them on herself the same way. Um, Susan, would you like to come up and share a quick little testimony? Um, my friend Susan here, I shared with her um, the little respiratory protocol when her and her husband were sick with COVID. And you guys were really sick. We, I, I, he wasn't. A couple weeks. It's kind of like you guys. I was really sick. I just tried not to die. <laughs> That's all I and then um, oh, I had the week of not so bad. I worked through it. And then um, I got some energy on Friday night and I mowed the lawn. And then I um, took a dive. That's six or day six or seven and I just crashed. And then it occurred to me, you said that you need, fevers are good, don't try to suppress them. And I thought, I don't, I've never had a fever. That's not good. So I thought I better do the hot bath to get induce a fever. So I did that a few times. And it helped a lot. And then the cold shower, really cold. And then really hot bath. I got the um, my pot yeah. of water, and I felt like I was in the 1800s, you know, putting my my hot boiling water in my tub. And then um, I also did the heating pad on the back, and then the hot. And then just different every day, something different. Yeah, it helped a lot. Amen. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So. You can have your own story, share this information with others. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm tired of seeing people get really sick and go to the hospital and, and someone not make it. And if we can save a life, amen, right? That's what we want to do. Um, with that, I'm going to ask um, Pastor Steve to come up. And again, don't forget, let us know if you're interested in a hydro lab class. Um, write your info down. Um, plan on coming to our next event in December. Were you blessed tonight? Absolutely. All right. I Bless hope you, you guys can really use this. Rich, I know you were blessed. I was blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Hour and a half drive home might be hard. <laughs> you can crash in our pad if you want. All right. If you bow your heads with us, we're going to just pray. 
Thank you so much, Lord, for this treatment, for this method that we know works. Water is a powerful tool against fighting disease and virus. So we're grateful for this treatment. Help us to uh, not neglect it as we are moving forward and teaching people how to do this. We pray that there would be a, a great resurgence of this method, that uh, people will know true healing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can rest as long as you want, okay? Thank you. No rest. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thank you.